Hello guys, how are you? Uh, this is your teacher Haris Bhatt and today I'm going to uh, solve a, questions, a question in front of you. Uh, after seeing that question, you will be very amused and you'll be very happy also. So you are seeing my YouTube channel, Learn Accounting with Sir Haris and I'm your accounting teacher, Sir Haris Bhatt. Today I'm going to solve question number one of May, June, 2024. AS accounting variant 22. I am going to solve question of May June 2024. I got the paper actually from uh, one of the one of my students from abroad, and I'm going to solve it in front of you. So uh, please see the video till the end, and inshallah, in the next videos you will be able to get all those questions in the same paper in which we have 90 marks paper of AS accounting paper two. We have 90 marks paper. First question uh, of, is of 30 marks, then 15 marks, then 15 marks, and then of absorption and cost and from cost and management accounting, we have a question of 30 marks. So today I'm going to solve first question, which has come in May, June, May, June 2024, variant 22, question number one. It has come from incomplete records. Second question has come from errors along with company accounts, but you may say that it has basically come from errors. The, the third question is from, which is of 15 marks is from ratios. And the fourth question is from marginal costing CVP analysis. So let's start the question, which is question number one from incomplete records. Zahid supplied the following information for the year ended 31st December, 2023. All sales were made on cash basis. Cash sales totaled 195,000. All goods were sold with a markup of 50%. Calculate the gross profit of the business for the year ended 31st December 2023. So if, so if you just look at the question, it means that we don't have credit sales. We just have cash sales and we have to calculate gross profit, which carries only one mark. So how you're going to do that? First, you will be very clear about this thing that because sales has been given and all sales are cash sales, which is 195,000 and markup is given. So you have to convert markup into margin. Why sir? Because markup is a gross profit percentage on cost of sales. In order to calculate gross profit, sales is given in the question. So for sales, we need to convert markup into margin because margin is basically the percentage of gross profit on the amount of sales. So markup into margin, when I will convert markup into margin, it will become percentage over 100 plus percentage, which is 50 over 100 plus 50, which will become 50 over 150. So you may say that margin is going to be for this question, that is 50 over 150. We don't need to convert it in percentage because we can directly multiply it with the amount of sales to get the gross profit. So let's calculate the gross profit. As we know that the amount of sales is 195,000. So <clears throat> gross profit will be, I'm using the abbreviation of GP, but you will use the full labeling, which is gross profit. Otherwise you will, marks will be deducted. So gross profit is going to be 195,000 multiplied by margin, which is the gross profit percentage on sales. So let's calculate it. I will multiply the thing with the margin, which is, which is going to be 50 over 150. So the answer of gross profit will be 65,000. If you just calculate it, you will find the same answer. So the gross profit I have calculated and I got the one mark. I converted markup into margin and then I have multiplied the amount of sales with margin, not markup, which is 50 over 150 percentage over 100 plus percentage, 195,000 into 50 over 150, we will get 65,000 is going to be the answer of gross profit. So one mark, we are done with that. In additional information, let's uh, move forward from A part to B part. Inventory and trade payables are given. Inventory 16,400 opening, ending is 22460. Trade payables 13500 for opening trade payable and 15600 for closing trade payable. 
all purchases were made on credit. Trade pay suppliers were paid 134240 after deducting cash discount totaling 560. Some of the students have found this a little difficult because they started believing that maybe the discount received is included in the payment to trade payable, but it is after deducting cash discount of totaling 560. So the discount received is separate from the payment to suppliers, which is 134240. Zahid took goods for his own use during the year. However, no record was made of the value of these goods. So it means that we have goods drawing. The entry for goods drawing is drawings debit and purchases credit, right? So it means that we have to add it in drawings, but it needs to be subtracted from purchases. But the amount of goods drawing is not given in the question. So you might need to find that by going reverse in the trading account or through any other calculation which you feel confident or which you feel okay with that. So let's, let's do first that because we have opening inventory and we have closing inventory also and trade payables are also given opening and closing and payment to supplier and discount receive is also given, but we don't have credit purchases. So we need to find credit purchases first so that we can move forward. So let me find the credit purchases. Sir, why you are asking that? Because the B part basically is going to ask you to find purchases. I'm going to show you also, but just I'm telling you because I want to solve the amount of purchases for you and the drawing, which is not, which the value, which is not given. And then we will move forward accordingly. So let's do that. So I am going to prepare, but I'm going to prepare purchase ledger control account PLCA in order to find credit purchases. So let's calculate it. Purchase ledger control account. We know that purchase ledger control account is a total trade payable account. And in order to prepare the total trade payable account, it is quite simple. What we need to do, brought down will come over here. That is the opening trade payables. Let's see how much are given. Opening trade payables are given 13500 and closing, which is balance carried down is 15,600. So 13,500, which is opening trade payable, it's a liability. So that's why it has a credit balance. It will come on the credit side. and oh. then we are going to have the closing trade payable. I will write the carry it down over here. Sorry. And that is going to be 15,600 is going to be the carry it down. Now payment to supply will come over here, which I will write like this. How come sir? Because payment to supplier means trade payable debit and bank credit. So trade payables are going to be debited because of bank. I can write bank over here also. So if you want to write bank, you may write bank also. Then over here on the debit side, we need to write discount received also. Because discount received is going to be, is will come on the debit side. Why? Because it will decrease trade payables, right? So increase in trade payable will come on the credit side. Decrease in trade payable will come on the debit side. So because of discount received, that amount will not be received from trade payables. And that is going to be our discount received, which is, if I'm not wrong, that is 560. So let's write it down, 560. Let's check it. So the discount received is 560, yes. And the payment to trade payable is 134240. So let me write it over here. Trade payable is going to be debited because of bank. So I am writing on the debit side, the amount of payment to trade payable 134240 and the difference which will come on the credit side, that is our credit purchases. So I can calculate it. I will, I will go for the total of the debit side. I will make the total of the debit side and what I will do, I will subtract the credit side into that and I will find the amount of credit purchases. So the total, if I will do, let me calculate it first. It is 150140140. So the total over here will be the same 150140. And the difference of the two sides 
thing. If I calculate it, 150140 minus that is 13,500. That is 136,640. So I have calculated. Okay, 150400 is the total. I have calculated it wrongly. Sorry for the interruption. 150400 is the total. Okay. So we know that why credit purchases are coming on the why credit purchases are coming on the credit side because of the reason that you know that credit purchases the entry is going to be purchases debit and trade payable credit so purchases are going to be debited because of trade payable 150400 here also 150400 and the answer of credit purchases is 136900 so we have found the credit purchases that how we are going to calculate it yes so I don't need to write the broad down because the carry down will become the broad down of the because he the question didn't ask us to prepare proper purchase ledger control account. They just demanded us to prepare to find credit purchases, which we have already done. So we are done with the second part also that we have already calculated the credit purchases. Now let's find the drawings which is missing in the question. For that, I will go for the proper preparation of a trading account. Right, I will write sales, or you may say if you want to write it down like trading account. If you want to go for the name with the trading account, you can do that. So you will start from revenue because now normally we use revenue instead of writing it sales. So revenue is given in the question because all revenue is based on cash. So cash sales are given in the question that is 195,000. So how you have you have calculated that, but it is given, here it is given, cash sales is 195,000. So that's fine. Now I will subtract less cost of sales. First of all, it will come opening inventory, add purchases. Then I will subtract less goods drawing, which is not given, which we have to find because it's not given in the question. It is a missing figure. So how come you know that it is a missing figure? Because goods drawings are always subtracted from purchases. So I have to subtract it from purchases. But having said this, you need to remember that goods drawings are not given in the question. Let's see point number three, last one. Zahid took goods for his own use during the year. However, no record was made of the value of these goods. So no record was made means it has not been recorded and that's why we need to find it as a missing figure. So let's let's write the opening and closing inventory first. Opening inventory given in the question is 16,400 and the closing inventory is double to 460. So let me write it down. 16,400 and the closing inventory which is going to be subtracted double to 460. Let me check it again once. 16,400 and double to 460, right? Credit purchases we have already calculated. That is from by preparing PR purchase ledger control account. That is 136,900. That's done. Now, goods drawing are going to be subtracted from this, whatever the amount may, might be, which we are still to found, still to found. We don't have that amount until now. So here I will write the gross profit. I'm telling you that I'm using the abbreviations opening inventory like OI and CI. You will go for the full label because otherwise you will may you might find deduction of marks. So gross profit, we already have an idea about that gross profit because we have calcul calculated it directly through margin. So one more thing which I want you to remember that if markup or margin is given in the question, if markup or margin is given in the question, it means that gross profit will be calculated directly. If markup or margin is given in the question, it means that gross profit will be di calculated directly and there can be some missing figure. 
which can be calculated by going reverse in the trading account or through cost of sales because we can find cost of sales directly also by subtracting gross profit from sales we can find cost of sales so gross profit is 65000 now if i will subtract 195000 minus 65000 i will calculate it in front of you 130000 is going to be the what is obviously cost of sales so cost of sales are going to be 130000 now i am going to find the uh, goods drawing which is the missing figure so 16400 plus 136900 minus 22460 should be 130000 should be 130000 or what you, what you can do 130000 you can add 22460 which is subtracted from this amount you can add this amount and you can subtract opening and opening inventory and purchases yeah addition of two the addition of two of these things will be subtracted from the total of 1 lakh 30000 and 22460 by going reverse so 1 lakh 30000 plus 22460 that will become 152460 minus 136900 and minus 16400 you will get 840 so 840 is going to be the missing figure which is the goods drawing so i can write over here 840 and goods drawing we have already calculated we have found the goods drawing by going reverse and we have found the missing figure you can do that also 16400 plus 136900 minus 22460 the answer will be 130840 so 840 is additionally calculated which is not a part of cost of sales because cost of sales is 130000 but the answer which is coming by adding purchases in opening inventory and subtracting closing inventory like 16,400 plus 136,900 minus 22,460, there is a gap of 840 between that amount and 130,000. So that gap is basically goods drawing which needs to be subtracted from purchases. So that's how we have found it. And how I have, I have calculated all these, let me show you. I'm going to cancel it out because I don't have the uh, questions directly with me because it has come in a different manner. So if you just look at this question, just a minute. So calculate for the year, you just look at it. Calculate for the year B part, purchases, three number. We have, we have prepared the purchase ledger control account, right? And we have fine credit purchases and the value of goods taken for own use by Zahid. That is the goods drawing. We have calculated that also, right? So we have done that part that B, B parts have, uh, have already been gone through because we have calculated those parts and we have done that part easily. Now let's move forward. And for that, the next thing which we are going to do is that we have to go for the calculation of, we have to prepare statement of profit and loss. From this data, we have to prepare a statement of profit and loss starting from gross profit. How come, sir? Let me show you. Because I have the questions in parts. That's why I want it to be in the same manner so that you may not find any difficulty in understanding. See? So this is how. This is in front of you that you have to go for the for statement of profit and loss you have to prepare regarding this question. So let me do that. I will start from gross profit, which is given in the question already, right? And I have to subtract the expenses from the gross profit. Let's, uh, we have already calculated gross profit, which is 65,000. So let me open a new paint shop for you because we have done that part. I hope so that you have completely understood that. Even if you have problem, you can message me on my YouTube channel or and you have I, have, I have given my numbers also, you can directly contact me also through WhatsApp. It doesn't make any difference to me, right? But this is something very important that I have been able to have this paper with me and I'm solving this. So I want you to share it with other students so that they can get benefit out of it. And they can also be aware that how to, uh, how they have done in the paper, how, uh, what they have done in the paper and what marks they can expect from the upcoming result on 13th August 
if I'm not wrong, it is around 13 lakhs. So 65,000 is going to be the gross profit. The first thing which I'm going to do is that I have to add other income in that. And that other income is basically rent received. So how do you know that? Obviously, I have, when the students have appeared in the paper, I've also given the guests which has come in the paper also in AS and in A2 also. So students have discussed with me about the paper and the paper is also in front of me right now. So income from rent receivable, owing to Zahid business 280 at 1st January and bank receipts during the year 5360 and received in advance is $600. So we have to prepare income account. Some students, what they do, they use to they used to calculate it directly. My dear, I will never recommend you to calculate it directly. Why, sir? Because there are questions which has come in the paper in which you have to prepare the in income account and expense account. So if you are doing it directly and you feel that you can do that whenever it, when, whenever it need be, then maybe you don't have that kind of practice. So it is better that you, from the very start, you start, you, you do prepare the account so that you may find it easily to solve the question. Though it's a working, but working does have some marks. If you have done working and you haven't solved the question correctly, you will still get marks. This is from, this is written in the examiner report and all teachers have an idea about that. So owing to Zahid business is 280 and received in advance is 600. So owing is basically written 280 over here. And in advance, I will write over here in advance, brought down. And I will write over here in advance, carry it down. And the bank will come over here like this, because whatever the amount has been received through rent, I will write over here on the credit side, the bank amount. Let's see how much it is. 5360, 280, 5360 and 600. So 280 is basically the asset that is the crude income. So it's an asset. That's why it is debited. In advance, bank to income 5360 will be written on the credit side. Bank to income, bank to rent income. Rent income is credited because of bank. So that's why it has come on the credit side. And received in advance is 600. So I will write over here 600 as received in advance. And because it's a liability in advance, brought down is a liability. Prepaid brought down, you may say, or you may say that also. In advance, brought down and in advance, Carry it down. It's a liability account because income received in advance is a liability. So I will go for the total and the difference will come in the statement of profit and loss. So the total will come that is over here 5360 and the same total will come on the definitely on the uh, credit side and the difference will come. Let me calculate it and the difference will come on the with the name uh, with the name profit and loss account that is 4480. So I have calculated it 4480 and total is going to be 5360. Right? Let's write it down now that the rent income is going to be 4480 and I will add that definitely. That is other income and the total will be 69480. 6948B. That's it. So it's quite easy. I didn't find any uh, tough part regarding this paper or regarding this question, I must say. So let's uh, move on to the other parts of the to the other parts of the question. Let's move on to that. So next thing is this. Okay, it is written over here. Fuser G prepare an extract from the statement of profit and loss for the year ended 31st December. Starting with the gross profit calculated in A. So I've done the same thing. Next, advertising. We have been given. You can prepare the advertisement account, general expense account, insurance account, and wages account. You have to prepare because why? Let me tell you. If opening and closing inventory is given, if opening and closing items are given in the question for any expense or income account, it is better to prepare that particular account. It's better to prepare that particular account to find the missing figure or to find the profit and loss figure. Again, the same thing. You may feel that we need to calculate it directly. No, I'll go for the working. Why? 
I can show you questions which has come in the paper in which you have to prepare the proper account. Even in A2, when you are going to prepare uh, subscription account in the non-profit organization, you have to prepare proper account. So it is better that you may start practicing it from the very early stage. So prepaid is 490, that is asset, and accrued carry down is 610. So prepaid brought down will come on the debit side. Debit side, it is an asset that is 490. I'm not writing brought down because it's just a working. That's why. Spelling is also a mistake, doesn't matter. Prepaid 490, accrued is 610. So accrued carried down will come over here. Because that is not brought down, that is carried down. And that is prepaid brought down is an asset. That's why it has come on the debit side. And accrued carried down is going to be a liability. That is why it will come 610 on the debit side. Because accrued brought down will come over here as a liability. This is how we prepare the expense account. Bank figure will come over here. Expense debit. Expense is going to be debited because of bank. So expense is debited because of bank. Prepaid brought down is an asset. Accrued brought down is a liability. Same is the case with the closing balances. Prepaid carried down will come over here. I'm just showing you just to make you understand the concept. So bank figure is uh, if 5960. So bank payment figure for advertising it is 5960. So now let me calculate it to find the statement of profit and loss figure. 490 plus 5960 plus 610, right? That is going to be 7060. So the total which will come with the name statement of profit and loss, that is going to be 7060. Sorry, 7060. I hope so that you are getting my point that how I'm going to uh, solve this question for you. And it's quite easy. Now I will prepare the other accounts. That is the general expense account I'm going to prepare. And then I'm going to prepare the wages account and insurance account also because I want to prepare all the accounts. So let's do it. Insurance account, we have the same procedure as we have done in advertising. So I can calculate it directly. Prepaid, uh, we have done 330. 4510 because it's a, insurance is an expense account. So prepaid brought down. And 4510 is the bank payment and prepaid carry down is 390. So in bank payment, which is 4510, what you will do, prepaid carry down will be subtracted and prepaid borrowed brought down will be added. So let's prepare the insurance account for you because as I discussed with you that it is better to prepare the free account, although it may take the time, but if somebody, some teacher can ask you that it will take more time to solve the question then, so I will, my, I, my answer to that is that we have time now. The paper, the time allowed for the paper was, yes, it was in the past one, one hour and 30 minutes, but now it is one hour and 45 minutes. So you have enough, somehow or the other, you have time to handle it easily. Not easily, but you can handle the paper. The time will not be short. If you have exact idea about the paper, how to solve it, you can do that. So prepaid is 330 and 390 is the prepaid carried down. So let me write 330 and 390 is the prepaid carried down. Let me check it. Prepaid brought down is 330 and prepaid 390 carried down and 4510 is the bank figure. So bank will come over here, 4510. And that is going to be the statement of profit and loss, which is the balancing figure. Okay, we have to calculate it because we have to write it in the income statement to solve the question. And that is going to be 4450, right? So let me write over here some of the expenses. First of all, I will write the uh, uh, advertisement, right? The advertisement expense is going to be how much? It is 706, right? Then I'm going to write the insurance. And insurance, if you just look at, I have prepared, that is 4450. Then I'm going to write the general expenses. And then we have wages, right? I have missed the one word, no problem. So let's see, let's prepare the general expense account. So if you just look at that general expense account, I have just one uh, part. 
and that is the accrued 570 accrued brought down i must say so you can 8480 is the bank payment so accrued carried down or you may say that expenses which is uh, not yet paid outstanding expenses that is added in the bank figure so the opening will be subtracted so 8480 minus 570 we will get the answer so i believe that i am not going to prepare the general expense account because it is quite easy 8480 and if i calculate it 570 that is 7910 so 7910 is going to be the general expenses answer 7910 after subtracting that amount next is going to be the wages and wages is also very easy 12400 is the bank payment and accrued 470 will be added in there so it will become 12870 though okay it's not we don't need to calculate it but let's do it just for the reason of uh, that uh, we may not do it wrong so 12870 is going to be the answer so i'll write over here 12870 i hope so that you are getting the answer last is going to be the depreciation on non-current assets right so let's see so the non-current asset had the following values if nothing is mentioned in the question, it means that this question doesn't allow you to solve the, to calculate depreciation through cost method. You will go for the net book value method. And again, I will go for not the working. I will go for the account. So you have to prepare the account through net book value method. Aapko aana chahiye, right? So non-current asset account through net book value. And how I'm going to prepare that? Let's do it non-current asset through net book value. So everything is going to be uh, written in this account according to the net book value. So we have brought down obviously the start of the, then we have the bank figure, we have purchased the new asset, whatever the amount is going to be. Then here it comes the disposal. Disposal value you will write with the amount of, oh, yes, with the amount of, again, Disposal is going to come with net book value, not with the sale proceeds of the disposal, neither with the cost price of the disposal. It will come with the net book value of the disposal because everything in this account is written. Everything is in this account is written on net book value. So let's do it. Let's calculate it. Brought down of uh, Non current asset is now 1 lakh 94,000 and carried down is 1 lakh 88,000. So let me write it 194,000. And here I will write 1 lakh 88,000. Sorry. Right. Then the bank figure you have purchased one more asset during the year that is for a price of additional non current asset were purchased for 9,200. So what is the entry? Non-current asset debit, bank credit. So, bank non-current asset is going to be debited with an amount of 9200 with reference to bank. So, I will write over here. Then, the disposal, but we are, we are supposed to write that disposal with net book value. And it is on the credit side. So, there is a profit on disposal of 2400 and it has been sold for 5600. Profit means that the value of the net book value of the asset is less than it has been sold or the net book value of the asset is the price of the net book value is 2400 less than the selling price. So 5600, we have sold the asset at a price of 5600. I will subtract minus 2400. So it means that the net book value is 3200. The net book value is 3200 and we have sold the asset at a price of 5600 that's why we are having a profit of 2400 so the net book value i'm going to write over here over here is going to be 3200 and the difference is going to be written with the amount of depreciation because brought down carried down asset account is already prepared and now i can write the uh, how much should i say the depreciation and that is going to be 12000 the difference of the two sides is going to be 12,000. So 12,000 is the depreciation. Total of the debit side, 194,000 plus 9,200 minus 3,200 minus 12,000 minus 188,000. You will get the amount of depreciation, which is going to be 12,000. So this is how I have solved the question. 
and I have prepared the non-current asset account through net book value method. So I have written brought down, addition, carried down, disposal with net book value. I will repeat again. Let me see. It has been sold. The asset which has been sold, it is sold for 5600 and there is a profit of 2400. It means the value, the net, net book value was 3200 and we have sold it at a price of 5600 resulting in a profit of 24. So that profit will also be added in rent income. So that is the important point, which I want you to write afterwards, after when you have calculated the depreciation. So profit on disposal will also come over here because that is also basically an income. So profit on disposal, how much is the price? That is 2,400. So I will write over here. 2400 and the total will be written changed. Why? Because I can understand that you may, you might miss that point. And even if you miss that point, doesn't matter. You can do it again. Remember that if there is a cutting, if you have done cutting in the paper, it won't deduct any mark. You won't lose any mark for that. So don't worry about it. But if you have done something wrong, or then definitely there is a reduction of one mark, three kg, and mark scheme basically tells that how much marks are going to come and how it is going to be solved in the paper. Then another income which we have missed, and that is going to be discount received. So let me write because discount received is also an income, and I have to write over here discount received that we have written. In the in which in which in purchase ledger control account and the amount of that income is going to be sorry profit is uh, twenty four hundred and the discount received is going to be five sixty. So I'll go for the total of this. Now you may have an idea about this or you may ask me this question, sir. Why discount received is coming in income? I'll give give you the answer. Just let me uh, go for the total and. Solve the question, then I will give you the answer. So the total for this is 72440, but I have calculated it. And the total expenses that is going to be 44290. Let me write it. And the profit which we are going to have is 28150. So 28150 is going to be the profit for the year which I will write over here. Now let's discuss about that point, which I have missed. The entry for discount received is trade payable debit or whatever the purchase ledger is and discount received credit, right? This is the entry. So when you are, when you are preparing purchase ledger control account, you have debited trade payables only. Purchase ledger control account or trade payable account is debited because of discount received. But you didn't mention discount received as income. So discount received has to be included in other income under the gross profit. And then the double entry effect will be completed because the counting is based upon dual aspect concept. So you have to go for the dual aspect concept calculate to solve the question. So this is how we have completed this part which has been prepared, which I have done at the statement of profit and loss. Gross profit and other income, which includes rent received by preparing the T account and profit on disposal, which I have done at the end. Why? Because after the preparation of non-current account, non-current asset account, I realized that we have a profit on disposal. So I added profit on disposal and other income and then discount received is also income, which has been written in PLCA. It is also given in the question. If you just look at the previous part, you will see that we have prepared purchase ledger control account and we have used discount received in that. So that will be added as 560 over here. Totally 7240, 440 total expenses and then the profit for the areas 28150. I hope so that you got the uh, understanding of this question, which has come in May, June 2024, variant 2.2. Two. Question number one. So let's move forward. To the other part of this, other part of this question. 
uh, we have done that so let me cross it cross it down so this is going to be the part and this says that zahid plans why this is not showing fully let me check it okay so it says that zahid plans to expand his business this would mean he would no longer operate as a sole trader he is considering the following options option a form a partnership with talha who currently owns a similar business option b form a limited company with himself and talha as shareholders and directors advise zahid which option he should choose justify your answer by considering both advantage and disadvantages so this is going to be the last part of this question so let's do it option a if you if, if i discuss with you regarding option a so how i am going to solve this i'm going i'm going to tell you first and then i'll write it down also option a basically tells that we are going for a partnership so when we are going for a partnership it means that talha who currently owns a similar business talha will bring capital into the business so more capital will be available for the business then risk and responsibilities will be shared he will also perform some responsibility and risk will also be shared and disadvantage is that that profit will be shared between the two person between the two partners and then there will be there can be conflict between partners there can be disagreement between partners decision making will become difficult obviously so these are the difficulties we are having with a partnership and some advantages if we are going to form a limited company then definitely we have we can arrange more capital than partnership why because we can subscribe shares to the general public and we can purchase the shares uh, from the pub, uh, from general public we can offer shares to the general public so we can have more capital and the liability the shareholders liability will be limited to the extent of shares held by them so it, we have limited liability but you may say that the market share will also be increased because company can issue more shares company can go to a large scale business company can enhance its business at a larger scale with with increase in capital then uh, we can uh, we will get dividend from people they will get dividend but the problem is that that uh, decision making will get slow because we need to approve every decision needs to be approved in the annual general meeting so decision making will get slow then there will be you know more uh, legal requirements in developing a company right uh, then what will happen that uh, there will be more legal requirements for the company and uh, decision making will get slow as i discussed that uh, you know uh, more shareholders and there will be approval in the annual general meeting then we have to publish our financial statements also because you know public limited company is required to publish its financial statement so secrecy may not be maintained to that extent so secrecy will definitely be shared so this is how we have solved this question uh, i was about to uh, write it down uh, but i hope so that you can arrange it and which option we will choose i will go with the partnership because it needs more uh, less uh, financial need because you know uh, in option b in, uh, in we have to go for the registration of company which which uh, which needs more legal requirement and which needs more capital also because it needs more funds so more funds will be needed to go for that so this is how we have uh, gone for the for this question if you have any doubt in your mind then you can ask me that uh, <clears throat> any question thank you very much uh, inshallah taala uh, i will come with the second third and fourth question soon with you take care allah thank you